Hey yo, what's up everybody? It's Beamilitant. Welcome back to the channel and you guys, I know I'm late making this video to recap for the Eagles, but uh, I'm showing up pretty much whenever I want to, just like the commanders do. So uh, yeah, there's that. <laughs> I'll put in as much effort as the team puts in, so so we're at that point. Um, so the Eagles game. Uh, first of all, before we even get into the Eagles game, which I'm not going to make this video long at all, uh, all off season, you can go back into my community posts and you can see everything, every single like move that the Eagles did, even in the draft, I have like, I have it right here. I'm looking at, it, I'm like, wow, the Eagles are murdering us in the draft right now. And then like later, like they even changed their uniform to have a black alternate Jersey or whatever. And I'm like, that looks pretty good. And then look at our jerseys. I, don't, I I hate our jerseys and stuff, like some of our jerseys. But I know I understand some people will like them, whatever. You can like them if you want. But I didn't like our jerseys, and I didn't like all the all the stuff that we did like to our jerseys and the name and all that stuff. So I wasn't a fan. So all offseason, I'm watching them get uh, James Bradbury. I'm watching the Eagles get all these players. And just like all the holes on their team, they, they sat there and said, Okay, this is a hole for us. And they went out and did something about it. And I'm sitting here, like, every single move they made in my community tab, I'm like, yo, look what the Eagles just did. It makes sense. What they're doing makes sense. It's it, it when you when you just like watch football for long enough and then you sit there and watch what the Eagles just did this offseason, you're like, okay, well, damn, they filled that hole. Damn, they filled that hole. Damn, their draft is good. It's not rocket science to just sit here and be like, damn, dude, the Eagles were doing the right move. They did right stuff. They did the right stuff. Did the right stuff. Did the right stuff. And then not even that, even like the branding, they have all black like helmets and stuff now, like whatever. So they were just killing us in the off season. And the whole time, uh, every single step of the way, I'm posting it on, on there or whatever. And then there's people always like, oh, just worry about us. You know, don't worry about nobody else. Worry about us. Well, you can learn. You can watch and learn. And guess what you could do? Watch what the Eagles did this offseason. And also, let's go back. <clears throat> Excuse me. The, the Eagles, they just won the Super Bowl in 2017-2018 uh, season or whatever. And now they are already 3-0, and built a team again. They they already built a team again. Now it's only three games into the season. Who knows what where the season's going to go? But they look good, right? They look good, and they just won the Super Bowl a couple years ago and already have built another contender. And we haven't built one in 30 fucking years. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. And then I'm sitting here, like, just as a fan and looking at the, the moves that they're making and stuff, I'm like, okay, well, that makes sense. And then looking at the moves we're making, dropping Tim Settle, someone we could desperately be using right now, and he wouldn't have cost shit. Dropping Tim Settle, Matt Ioannidis, all these players, this, the depth that we had, we got rid of it. For what? To bring in Carson Wentz, $28 million? I mean, don't get me wrong, Carson Wentz has been okay, but he is also a part of the problem, which people don't want to bring this up, which I, it blows my mind. He is also part of the problem. Is he the biggest part of the problem? No, he's not. The offensive line is trash. I get that. But I'll show you here in a second. What happens when an offensive line is trash and you can move and you can actually make some plays? And so, I'm I don't need, like I'm not even really gonna get into the game. Uh, you guys know what happens. Um, the fourth, I will say one thing: the fourth, the us going for it on fourth and twenty-two. I forget what time was left in the game, but that is so desperate and idiotic because I I can't on the top of my head I can't remember how much time was left in the game. But the thing is. We were in field goal range, and Ron Rivera goes for fourth and 22? You kicked the field goal, and even though, okay, sure, there's not a whole lot of time left in the game, but we score points, we come away with some momentum, and then also the Eagles got to go, well, shit, they did score. Uh, there's a little bit more pressure on them to stop us from scoring, and guess what? Our defense goes out, gets another stop. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, now there's a little bit more pressure. Now there's a little bit more hope. But we go for it in fourth and twenty-two, idiotic. That's that's so desperate. And and like that's what I'm about to say. Look, I have a feeling looking back on this season, that fourth and twenty-two play is gonna be like, like the just I don't know the the, the motto or or like just it, of our season or just like uh the essence of our season uh, for lack of a better word I can't think of one right now. But so we're gonna look back at that fourth and twenty-two, that desperate ass play. Four, we went for it in fourth and twenty-two. Who gets 4th and 22? Unless they're playing against us, then they can get it. But 
We went for it on fourth and twenty-two. It's just reeks of like desperation. And what did and then look at the our off season, right? What did Ron Rivera do? Told everyone, hey, we need a quarterback. We'll pay whatever you want. Desperate, just was desperate in the off season. Uh, just and and that's how our off season went. And you already got you guys already know the lack of depth, the players not being ready to play. Uh, just the team is god awful right now. Um. Whew. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Uh, so, yet again, I, I, I forget what my next point, where I was going with this, but let's get into, I guess it was Carson Wentz, right? Um, so, Carson Wentz isn't the biggest problem on the team at all. He, he looks good at times, but the thing is, he doesn't extend plays. He holds on to the ball. He doesn't go off script, I bet. Whatever it is, he's the one on the field, and he's sitting there saying, seeing the field, and he needs to sit there and be like, okay, on this play, Scott Turner wants me to throw the, he, my, my, my route, my first person I'm looking at is supposed to be a, a, just down the field, right? And he's not deviating from that, and he's getting sacked and shit when, he's, when he needs to realize, hey, I've been sacked so many times already, screw what Scott Turner wants, I'm going to deviate from the plan because i'm the one on the field i can tell more of what's going on and he needs to like do his own shit sometimes he needs to be able to put, like go off script sometimes and i feel like he doesn't do that uh he also is not mobile and like i was thinking about um earlier go back to i know it's gonna piss people off go back to Kirk cousins go back to kyle shanahan uh when what there was a year that Kirk cousins was here when he was the best play action passer in the nfl and all they did was they they either ran the ball or faked the run and then they would do play action and they would roll Kirk cousins outside the pocket and create a new pocket and then take shots down the field whatever and it worked it worked well like why can, can why can we not move the pocket for Wentz if he's not going to be mobile if, or whatever why can't we call plays like that uh Kyle, or scott turner needs to go back and, and watch some of our history and watch Kirk Cousins and watch Kyle Shanahan and how they did that and how they're constantly moving the pocket. And we need to do some shit like that. If if, if Carson Wentz isn't going to run, if Carson Wentz isn't going to go off script, if Carson Wentz needs to have a pocket to play from, well, he's not getting one at the beginning of the play. So why not move the pocket and move him outside planned and try to figure something out? So now the other thing I want to talk about, which is I know that I can sit here and say what I want to say, but I know a lot of people aren't, aren't, you already have your minds made up or whatever. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you that Taylor Heineke is better than Carson Wentz. You can, you can make your judgment on that at whatever way you want to go. But what I do know, what I will argue is if we know who we are, we know our offensive line is trash, right? We know this. We, we've seen it. If we see it one more week, we're going to, that's who we are. Our offensive line is trash. We ain't going to be able to fix it this season. So what I would argue is seeing the circumstances that we're in, Taylor Heineke would be a better option right now. If we want to win now, if we want to win right now with the offensive line we have, Taylor Heineke is a better option than Carson Wentz because Carson Wentz refuses to go off script. He refuses to move out of the pocket he refuses to extend plays he holds on to the ball too long whatever so yet again like i said in this circumstance right now that we're we are in our offensive line is garbage taylor Heineke would be a better option if you want to win football games now it's just it just is and i'll just leave you with this and then we'll get out of here and i was here at this game and i challenge you go back and watch the Monday night football game last year, uh, when we played the Seattle Seahawks on Monday night, I was at the game. Every single time Taylor Heineke hiked the ball, he was under duress, pressure, right away. And we won. And we won. And, and like other people were saying, like I was saying, go back and watch what Daniel Jones just did versus the Cowboys. The Cowboys uh, gave Daniel, or pressured Daniel Jones more than any other quarterback in the league this year. And look what he did. He got out of the pocket. He ran. He ran for first downs. He threw. He ran and then threw the ball. Like, he, we, there's ways to counter this. And Carson Wentz ain't doing it. So 
yeah, I understand that, oh, Carson Wentz, if he had time to throw in the pocket, you know, he can throw the ball down the field and all this. I get it, but we don't have the time, so we have to adjust what we're doing. And I know they're not going to do this, but I'm just explaining, though, Taylor Heineke would be a better option. Let me let me show you this. They're showing up tonight. Heineke under pressure, trying to get out of there, and he does. And completes. And the Well, all right, there we go. That was my point. And you know Taylor Heineke does that all the time. So if our offensive line is garbage, I just think if we want to win games right now, it's the best option. I know it's not going to happen. I know I'm just wasting my breath. I know it's not going to happen. You don't pay somebody $28 million. It's gonna, our season's going to go into the toilet, and then we're going to look back and be like, oh, shit, man, that was a waste of $28 million, wasn't it? But if, if you were smart and you wanted to win right now, with, with the team that we have, I feel like Heineke is the better option. Uh, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people that want to debate that. That's cool. Whatever. It's your opinion. You can do. You can have a, your opinion on it. But I just feel we've seen what Heineke can, Heineke can do. Uh, and I feel like I've talked about this for long enough. So I'm going to go. Peace.